Thanks for tuning in to Stampscaping 101. This is the scene that I'll be stamping in this video. It's kind of a barn in the springtime scene. Um, when I first started the scene out, I was going to do a winter scene, kind of a barn in the snow based on a composition that I did a couple years ago. Got into it and decided that I, that I wanted uh, grass instead of snow, so I just switched up and added uh, some warm tones to the gra blue tones that were already in there. Added some grassy textures and changed it up completely from the initial intention. So anyways, uh, that's what happens sometimes and uh, with dye-based inks and the way that you can kind of blend them around. Overlapping colors, um, related colors I should say, um, works just fine. So you can start off with the initial idea and it can change up while you're uh, kind of in the middle of it, at the kind of towards the beginning or whatnot. So I can't change this scene back into a winter scene now, but uh, you know, um, it works just fine like this. So anyways, again, thanks for tuning in and uh, I hope you'll enjoy the uh, video. Okay, to get this card started, we're going to be doing the um, the barn stamp here in black. I have this other um, snow pattern here, but uh, there's enough room on this one acrylic block, so I just pre-mounted it to save some time in this video. I've just inked up one of them, though, and that's the barn right now. And I'm trying to figure out composition. Do I want more? sky or do I want more snow? Do I want it somewhere in between? I'll go, I'll go about the center. This is a clear acrylic block of course, but it also has the um, tech and peel uh, material on there, so the uh, rubber sticks right to it and you go and make your impression and it's temporary mounted okay all right so there's the barn let's get some additional impressions in here i'm going to make this uh barn in the uh snow and uh, i think i'll do this and let's go with the number 10 light blue from marvy and there's going to be a lot of tone in here, so I'm not going to have to be too careful with this. It's just kind of going for a little bit of texture. Okay. I don't need to mask off the barn. The blue is light enough where I'm not really sweating it if it does stamp into the barn a little bit. The barn is going to get colored in too, so I'm not really, uh, that's the reason I'm really not worried about this at all. Okay. Uh, something like that. Okay. A bit repetitive in here, but a lot of color laid down over the top of it will kind of smooth all that out and won't look so busy. Alright, let's see. I'm going to do a version of a scene that I stamped out a couple years ago at a scenic stamping retreat using these uh, two stamps, the uh, Tree Trunk and Tree Trunk Trio. Okay. I'll see what'll fit on here. I don't. We'll see how it goes. I might end up just using one of them, but multiple times. We'll see. Okay, I'm just gonna color this in black. I'm going for something fairly bold here. Okay, these are really gonna frame the scene off, especially on this uh, quarter page. Um, glossy cardstock. Uh, that was the 
number one uh, Marvy Black. Okay, and I can go for another one of these if I want to. I can stamp it a little bit higher, a little bit lower. I don't want to stamp these ones too low though, because if I stamp them down here, then I get this uh, top of the trunk to kind of deal with, or if I stamp it up higher, you know, I just have the bottom part, and that's the part that goes into the ground, but if you have this kind of stopping abruptly, you know, up here in the sky, then you kind of have to fill in with something else, maybe some leaves or something like that, otherwise it looks funny. Okay, I can also go with this one here, Tree Trunk Trio. Maybe I'll go with that one just for some variation. Step in this one, I don't know, maybe an eighth inch higher or something like that, quarter inch higher uh, than the tree trunk. And again, just stamping this in black. I want it fairly bold for a foreground. Okay, makes for a nice composition in terms of framing. Carries the eye in, kind of, you know, the eye kind of goes probably into the barn, I'm guessing. in terms of visually. Alright, um, now for the sky in there. I'm trying to think if I want to add anything up there. Um, I could go with the moon or something like that. I don't know if I want to though. Um, I'll tell you what. Let's go with this cloud in the background. Alright, now I rarely have to do any kind of masking, but in this case, I think I will. Um, because these are really um, very straight lines, so... Okay, salvia blue. Number 60 Marvy. Basically, if you don't have that color, go with, you know, some light blue that you have. Light to medium blue, I would say. And again, dye-based inks, not uh, pigment inks. Okay, let's see here. I'll mask off. I'm going to undermask it. I'm not going to go right to the edge. I'm going to underdo it a little bit so that if some of this stamp does stamp into the roof. It's fine, but it's better than having a big white line uh, in between the roof and the background. In this case, it'll be the roof and the, uh, the clouds. Um, on the tree, I don't know. I probably don't even need to mask that over. I'm going to color those in with some reds and browns. This is a fairly light blue, so I think it'll be just fine not uh, really uh, covering it up. Get good pressure on your stamp. If you're using a wood mounted stamp, go center block. If you, same thing if you're using an acrylic block or something like that. Plenty of center pressuring. Okay, this is what I mean right here. I did stamp that about that far into here, but you know, no big deal. I mean, it, there's a little bit of blue in there. It's not a solid piece of rubber, so it doesn't have this big shape in there. And you're using a light color, so I would, I probably would mask it off if I was using black on this uh, cloud. But a fairly light color, is what the blue looks like right here. I don't know, it looks almost medium blue, but that's because it's wet right now. When it dries, it'll be a little, a little bit lighter. Um, so you can just stamp right into a, a dark object. I wouldn't stamp this cloud right over the top of this area because this area is very light in here. It's not as heavy as the tree, you know, um, tone. Okay, going back in, using that same mask right there, the paper towel. 
and let's go in and get another cloud in there. Okay. So we have our background, midground, and our foreground. Alright, now let's see. As I look at this, I'm thinking, you know, I'm not I don't know where I'm gonna take this scene uh, in terms of the uh yeah, I don't know, what you call it, the emotional quality of it, the color, the values of it. It's gonna be night or day, I don't know. If it's night I'll probably stamp out a lot of those clouds up there. I just re-inked my aqua pad with the aqua re-inker. If all I had was the re-inker and not the pad, then I can easily take this ink and put it right on into the applicator and apply it. That would work just fine. Okay, let's see here. Let's start to define some of these clouds in terms of how light they are, the separation maybe of the clouds in uh, space, not outer space, but in terms of uh, the visual space of the scene. In other words, I had these two clouds that were stamped out identically light, but if I take some of this ink and I put it over this one right here, then it kind of pushes it back a little bit in terms of depth. So now instead of those clouds being on the same plane, visual plane, it looks like it's pushed back a little bit because I've toned it out. Now this is um, an aqua color, Adirondack Lights, and these colors are kind of shadow stamping pads again, so they're really super light in value. I'm going over a light color um, with an even lighter color. So the, the light color was the impression, and I'm going over it with an even lighter color. And that's why you can still see the clouds just fine, because this ink that I used on here okay, is darker than that one, and how dark I take the sky is going to be very important when I move on into my medium darker tones. I want those clouds to still show, in other words. Okay, now these trees, I'm going to bring some color into it, but I'm laying down some of this light blue over the top of it just to give it a little bit of continuity between itself and the sky, the sky being blue. Okay, now this barn, I was thinking about doing it in some kind of wood, woody colors, uh, reds, browns maybe. Um, we'll see. But I, again, just like the trees, I'm bringing some of this really super light blue into it. As I'm doing this blue scene right here, I'm looking at this, I'm kind of getting the urge actually, as I do this too, do it in more of a kind of a spring um, color scheme. And I still can. If I want this to be grass down here, what do you mix with blue to make green? You just put in some warm tones, you know, perhaps a yellow or something. Yeah, we'll see. I don't know if I'm going to do that or not. Okay. This is going back to the salvia blue, using the same applicator. I think that I apply 
onto the card is the same tip that I used for the uh, the Adirondack Lights Aqua. So the color that's being laid down is probably some combination of the two because they're all in this uh, stylus tool uh, tip. You know, those, both of those colors. In other words, you don't have to switch tips um, when you move on to your next uh, color, especially if it's the same color family. If I'm going from a blue, then I'm using a yellow, then of course you, you know, you're either going to clean the tip or switch tips. Okay, still working on a fairly light blue, so I'm going to bring some of that into this barn. I'm kind of adding it under the eaves there to kind of give those eaves a little bit of shading. Okay. Trying to decide if I want to use that, uh, if I want to go with that other color scheme, the warmer color scheme. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. Okay. Number 10 light blue. Same color that I stamped the uh, snow pattern with going into the sky. I don't want to fill up too much again because this color is darker than the salvia blue. So if I put a darker color over a lighter one in a pretty full saturation, you won't be able to see the impression anymore of whatever's underneath it. In this case, it's the cloud. Kind of adding this, you know, a little bit more judiciously than the first two colors, which are quite a bit lighter, both of them. Okay. sky. Don't stamp out all of your clouds now. Uh, sometimes people comment uh, to me, they say, um, they have a hard time retaining the light areas, you know, well, uh, to reiterate what I've said in um, some previous videos, it's just uh, when you get down to these darker tones, don't take it in quite as far as you did with the previous tones. You know, we kind of create muscle memory. We're, we're adding different inks and layering them in there, and um, you do it at a certain rate, okay? And it's kind of important to, you know, change up a little bit when you uh, move into your dark tones, stay on the edge a little bit longer. You know, there's a, a lot more moisture in this tip right here, so it tends to go a little bit farther. Uh, you know, before it gets dry, in other words. So sometimes you're going like this, darker tone, then you go like right in the middle there, and uh, because there's so much ink left in the tip, it'll leave a you know really distinctive mark, and you want it nice graduated colors, okay, in terms of uh, values um, most of the time. So stay on the edge a lot longer, don't go in as far, or blot some ink off, and then take it in there, you have more control over it that way. Okay. Uh, still deciding. You know what? To me, I think I'm going to take this warm, okay? This is the beauty of uh, dye base stinks. You can take these colors and blend them, alright? Now, if I wanted this to be some sunset scene, oh, okay, wait, I want a sunset in here with, you know, some yellows, oranges, and reds. If I put it over the, you know, blue, it's not going to read as the yellows, oranges, and reds anymore because they're transparent colors. But in the case like this, 
um, where I'm going for kind of a more grassy area. This is, by the way, uh, number 34 pale green in the Marvy line. Just go with a light green if you can have it. You don't want it too um, electric you know, in terms of the uh, intensity. Or I wouldn't. If you only have as a darker green, blot it off a little bit. Get it drier on your tip and then apply it. Then you have lighter green. Okay. That is the pale green. Blends just fine with the uh, blue because remember all of these greens do have the color blue in them. Okay, this is number 11 green. It's uh, light green. Very bright, intense, warm green. Okay, so we're already starting to get a little bit uh, brighter here. Warming up. Uh, let's try the number 96 jungle green. Darker yet. So anyways, I mean, you know, I wasn't intending, I promise you, I wasn't intending on uh, doing this type of color scheme on this scene. I was going to do a wintry one, but sometimes you just got to go with your, I don't know, gut, or man, maybe it's not gut, but go with your preference, and uh, I don't know, this one just told me to go, go warm in terms of the temperature uh, scheme of the scene. Okay, this is the number 72 pine green that I'm using. Now I'm hitting a lot of it at the base of the tree because I really want to anchor the trees down. This is kind of, uh, uh, this is another video that I want to do, but I want to do the, uh, uh, the effective use of shadows and, and scenic stamping. So this right here I'm kind of anchoring these trees down by the use of shadow and uh, if I want to do the same with the barn, okay, come into the barn, the base of the barn. This is the mark that I'm making right here. It's a very thin line, okay, and that will start to kind of anchor that structure down in terms of uh, Uh, making a statement about its opacity, you know. In other words, light isn't just kind of shining through it like a stained glass. It's it's being uh, um, halted by uh, you know the relative opacity of the structure. So, in other words, the structure by having a shadow is uh, you know it's blocking light from that area. So what that does is it kind of, like I said, it kind of anchors the uh, structure or the objects down into the scene. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's go and start applying some color onto the uh, barn. Uh, this is a memento desert sand. It's kind of warming up the uh, structure a little bit. This is kind of white down here, and then you can see it's a little bit different right there.
covering it up quite a bit. I figure this scene is going to be backlit. You know, those clouds are capturing some light from somewhere. I don't know, I guess it could be overhead too. Um, but for the most part, I'll make the front of this barn kind of darker. And the side of it darker. Okay, let's see. This was the desert sand, which is kind of a tan color. Why not bring that down into the grass for continuity? And dare I put some of it even up in the sky? Let's get some of this green out of this uh, tip here. I didn't really clean the tip out very well. And it still has some green on it from the last uh, scene. Okay. Applying some of this Memento. Memento is a pretty slick ink in terms of uh, its uh, texture. Okay, so I brought some of that up into that, those clouds to give them a little bit of warmth. Okay. Let's go back down to that grass. Okay, this was the 72 that I've already used down there. And here's a number four green from Marvy. Sheet of America, which is one of the companies uh, of Marvy, of the Marvy, the company of the Marvy brand line of inks, is uh, said that they. I mentioned this in my previous video, but they said they're going to uh, no longer make these pads or order them from Japan, and so Japan won't make them anymore. But um, that being said color like dark brown can also be found in many other lines. Um, the Distress Inks, um, you know, have all kinds of different brown in them. Grab a dark one and use it in the place of this one, okay? So, you know, there's all kinds of different brands and uh, you mix and match just fine on the uh, the dye bank east dye bank dye based ink uh, aspect of things. Okay, the side of that mill. I'm going to make it a little bit darker, giving it shading, kind of turning the object in space, saying that you know light is hitting it differently. some of this dark brown into the shadows. You can see where it's really starting to anchor this tree down. Okay. Same thing over here. I'm uh, inking up the side of this uh, tree, the dark side of the tree on the outside edge. Okay. I'm trying to figure out what else is going to go in there. Um, We need some texture down here, don't we? Let's see, maybe it's a good time to do that. And I'm trying also, when I'm sitting here, I'm trying to think of what colors I want to bring into that barn. I think I'm going to do it, but I think I'm going to do it with the alcohol inks instead of uh, uh, doing something with uh, you know, the stylus tool. 
Okay, grass texture. Uh, I think I used it on my last scene. So it's sitting on my desk, so I'm you know, going to use it again. Okay, create a little bit of foreground here. Texture. This is the dark brown color. Okay. Kind of stands out a little bit too much, doesn't it? It's very abrupt. Okay. So let's go back to our stylus tool. Uh, there was brown on this. Uh, I should really wait a little bit. That's a slightly wet impression, but we don't have time, so. Uh, let's see. Let's start off with a light brown. Add some of that in there. I think what will be better is green. Let's get some green going. Yeah, when I said it's a little bit, that impression of the uh, grass texture stamp is a little bit wet still, so it's kind of smearing it as I go along that. But I'm not going to worry about that too much, or really any. I'm just going to just going to go in there and do what I was going to do. Okay. Okay. How about going with a some more texture? This is sedge filler. Go in again with the uh, dark brown. Um, okay. Quite a lot of texture now throughout that grassy area. Let's go with a little bit more of the jungle green. some of that in there, smoothing out those impressions. Okay. Now, let's see. I have this right here. Fired brick distress. Any excuse to use these uh, cool colors. Okay. Blotted it off quite a bit. Let's introduce. I am going to bring in some uh, other colors into here um, with the alcohol pe based pens, but uh, let's give it a little bit of a head start with some of this uh, distress ink. I'm not coloring the whole thing because I do still want um, there to be a little bit of oscillation between light and dark in here. I can get a lot of this uh, color on the side of the uh, barn. Underneath the roof. Um, they say the most intense colors are in the uh, shadows, can be found in the shadows quite often. You know, because the colors aren't being washed out by, you know, super bright sunlight. So you can use more of it, in other words, in those areas. Okay, I don't know. Dare we bring some of this red into the green grass? Why not? It reads more as brown, again, because dye-based inks are transparent, and the colors underneath are going to influence what you end up seeing. Even though it may not read as those colors as if they were stamped out on a blank piece of paper. Okay. All right. 
getting a little bit of more dimension in that grassy area in front of the barn. Okay. I still have a tiny bit of light in there. Uh, light in terms of the white of the paper, or the lightness of the paper. up. Okay. Yeah, something like that. I'm not sure about the scale of this. If I put this guy here, first of all, I don't want him going up into the barn with like his head's being chopped off, uh, just visually. Possibly put him right here. Kind of that barn's in disrepair would be a kind of a pretty bad piece of uh, equipment. Well, not equipment, but uh, if that was this represented this guy's uh, barn, it's not doing a very good job maintaining it. So maybe this is just some passing horseman or whatnot. Some guy that lives in the area. I don't know if the scale's really right, but uh, who cares? It might make make it look like the barn is gigantic, but. Uh, like I said, who cares? Close enough. Okay. Let's go some more foreground. Done in black. In my last video, I thought I was stamping black, but I looked and the pad was actually dark green. Okay, this was the reeds large, and by the way, this guy was called uh, horseback. Yeah, kind of enjoying, you know, where this scene has uh, gone to. Quite different than a wintry, uh, cold uh, composition. All right, now I went to those two different blues up there and the uh, sky area. I think I want to add a little bit more blue up there, but at this point in time, probably the page is a little bit dry, so I'm going back to the aqua pad, okay? That says seashells, it's because they changed, that's what they used to be called now. That's the same color, it's just called uh, Adirondack Lights instead of Ocean Aqua. It's just called aqua. Okay, but anyways, that kind of dried, so I'm going back here and reinvigorating that paper with a little bit more ink. Going to a blue, which is a fairly dark blue, and we'll do that on the two corners of the upper half of the uh, scene. And I'm doing that just to kind of anchor it off. It's so dark down here, I want to... Uh, kind of balance it off a little bit of darkness at the top. Okay, that was the number three blue. Let me see. Let's see if I have my really dark Prussian blue here. Um, I don't. So, all right. If I want it really dark out here, I was going to go with another blue. Let's go with that dark brown. Is dark brown going to look like black? It, I mean, uh, look like blue when stamped over it? It shouldn't, again, because the blue is going to show through. 
I just want to do what I call kind of tipping the edges. Getting the edges one step, you know, darker. Just kind of frame things out from the top a little bit more. Okay. Oh, let's see here. Checking over some of the uh, pen colors. This is pink, I know. in there. Detailing. Maybe do some of the interior. Okay, that was pink. It's not because I want pink, but it's just a light color. And I'm going to use it as a foundation for some of these other tones. This is uh, uh, some kind of brown. Underneath the eaves. Okay, and let's see. This is kind of a orangish red. Pretty bright. It's too bright for me. So just laying some down, okay, some more red. Not waiting forever. Going back into lighter tone. This is kind of a pale orange color, tan. And what I'm doing is I'm just kind of blending that color out. And if you've worked with Copic pens, you know what I'm talking about. These ones happen to be the Marvy uh, Le Plume Permanence. alcohol-based pens. Okay, I guess I can bring some down here into the, some grassy area too, why not? a uniball signo. Both of these are uniball signos. Let's see which one's working better. Okay, this is pink. I'm just doing some uh, little flower effects. I cluster these little things when they represent uh, flowers. Eh, I guess I cluster things for the most part when uh, it's highlights or anything with these pens. I think it tends to look a little bit more natural that way rather than spreading all these little dots out, you know, just absolutely equally across a, a given space. These little pink looks really great on green. You know, that color combination. I think uh, maybe a red as well. And shell pen. I'll kind of mix up that red with a little bit of those pink uh, dots. See if I can see that down there. Let's 
you can like put it back in here, here. It doesn't really read as uh, red, but you have these little effects down here, and it really relates to that color right there, you know. All this running down here, you have all those same colors in there. I don't know. It's supposed to bring a little kind of visual harmony uh, to the design of this by having, you know, repeating your colors. Okay, now that those colors don't really show up too well in here, um, so I'm going to bring in some of this white and go for the same type of effect. bring that area to life, isn't it? Use those pens for the sky to create stars or something like that. Well, in this area down here, we had variations of both hue, value, uh, well, I guess that's what it is, mostly hue and values. I guess intensity, too. We have greens, browns. In terms of the hue, we have light, dark. In terms of the values. Um, but adding these little, you know, kind of hovering little, they're not supposed to be hovering in there, but uh, little points and specks of detail in there can really bring an area to life. And there's the uh, clouds up there. Okay. I'm trying to think if I want any highlights anywhere else. I, I guess I can bring a few in this tree if I want to create a little bit of a distinction and separation of space between the the barn and the tree, I can just put a little, few little dots like that. Don't draw a whole line or something like that, but see it's kind of broken up a little bit like that, but now, see that? It kind of separates that foreground from the background. And, I mean, I can do it on here, too. I can create a separation between this tree and the grassy area in there, where it kind of gets a little bit I don't know, I guess muddy, or muddled, whatever. Bring that little highlight on that tree to kind of pop it out from the background a bit. And it's just a few little dots in there. But, again, it can be fairly effective. Let me move this light out of the way here. Anyway, there you have it. And hope you enjoyed it. Uh, springtime barn. Thanks for watching.